to Nick Lynch's Comic Corner, classic slash known classic. This is episode number 20, uh, I think it's like 27, 13, and double shot 26, 07. Uh, first up we have is Justice League of America, issues 183 to 200, along with the first of three annuals. The first three issues is, well, part of the annual Justice League, just JSA team up. Where are that? They, they, these group team up, take on the freaking new gods. Though for some reason, Orion is not, now this, now this is not what he's supposed to look like here. Yeah, this is the Steve Ditko redesign Orion outfit. Uh, not really sure why. And everything here looks different, like dark side looks like it's a different color. Yes, this is due to the fact Conway had written a New Gods book just prior to this. And this is kind of in the way the conclusion of this book. Yeah, so that's multiple exactly what these issues are. It's, it's basically a three-parter. It starts issue 183 and wraps up with issue 185. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, and also Hundress is part of the, the JSA part of this time, so. And then pretty much with issue 186 is a standalone issue where they feed, where they fight the other Shaggy Man. Yeah, because at first basically they're like, wait, this is impossible. He's right here. How can he be attacking him? Well, because there's two of them. Mm -hmm. That's pretty much the reason why, and it's, well... A, uh... Stop. Anyways, um... There we go. That's one right there. Come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Yeah, and it's just a standalone issue. It does go any further than that. But an excellent issue. Yeah, Conway writes all the issues here. Um, let's see. No. That's not what I want there. What's the wrong thing here? Here we go. That's what I want right there. Now, 187 is uh, pretty much on the way a standalone issue where Proteus, who is a character from the Pre Creeper comics. Yes, for some reason, uh, Jerry Conway brought back a uh, sneak character like, like Proteus. No, he's not the Marvel character. He's only here for two issues, 187, 188. It's a quick two-parter where he just... Has the people get for just like swap bodies for an issue? Yes, seriously. Then we have the miracle at uh, well, there's backup story in the issue called Miracle at 22,000 Miles. It is simply the adventure at, at the Justice League. Um, it, it's just a continuation of the first story, but the very next story, yes, the very next story. Um, 189 and 190 is a is a two parter that features the return of Starro the Conqueror. Yep, he's back for this amazing two parter. You're thinking, wow, he's back. When was the last time he appeared? Well, it had been some time since his last appearance. I think, like, his last special appearance was probably back in uh, the, his debut appearance, which was Brave and Bold number 28. Yes, for some reason, Conway decided to... 
well, bring him back for a couple issues. I'm not sure why, but it's amazing. We have like a whole brief takeover of Earth. It could be because, well, it could have been a big anniversary for Justice League. Actually, his last appearance was in, uh, well, 451 of, well, Adventure Comics, which I will eventually get to that. Mm-hmm. Okay, so, yeah, 189 basically is like a continuation of basically the storyline, but it's a really good two-parter. Like, involves, like, there's even a funny thing of, like, even, like, all the Justice, like, pretty much everyone on Earth can be controlled by Starro for a whole issue. Yeah, by the way, the line for these two-parter is Aquaman, Black Canary, Batman, Elongated Man, Firestorm, The Flash, Green Lance, which is Hal Jordan, uh, Hawkman, Hawk Girl, Red Tornado, Superman, Superwoman, uh, excuse me, Wonder Woman, and Tana. Yeah, and also... Pretty much in the way in some of these later issues, uh, Satana, she had this, like, all one-piece outfit when she first joined, uh, with basically these issues in particular. She, after that conversation, I believe it was a long one, I think it was the Atom, she decided to switch back to her more traditional attire, and she wears the made of her run. Mm-hmm. Also, one of features the return of Amazo and the Key. Yep. 192, we turn up T.R. Morrow, the creator of Red Tornado and Amazo. Yeah. So, kind of in a way, we also see uh, ta- Tornado Tyrant. Otherwise known as Athun. Yes. If you're really curious about this guy... Uh, for some reason, he was a villain for Adam Strange. Yes. He started as a villain for him, and then he showed up in Just Like America number 17. Yes, seriously. You could say it's basically just, well, probably the writer basically decided to drop him off, and he returns to this very issue here. And then he pops up in the annual. But... It's another really interesting style of issues where basically revealing the whole backstory related. Also, uh, 193, uh, I forgot to mention this too. It has a eight page preview as a backdoor power to a really amazing series written by Roy Thomas, a retcon type of series. Same type of thing he did over Marvel with the Invaders. The debut of the All Star Squadron. The All Star Squadron being basically a group of characters who. Who are not regular Justice Leaguers. Yes. This is basically their debut appearance. Which of course basically involves GSA. Which at the time this group is basically comprised of the Atom. The Earth 2. Batman. Dr. Fate. The original Dr. Midnight. Jay Garrick. Alan Scott. Carter Hawkman. Uh, Johnny Hunter Thunderbolt. The, Dick, uh, the Earth 2 Robin. Wesley Dodd Sandman. The Spectre. This is Jim Corgan host him. The Earth 2 Suitman. Wonder Woman, Wonder Woman Earth 2, Wildcat, Starman, and they're joined by Johnny Quick, Liberty Bell, a version of Plastic Man, Rod Riley, and Robot Man. We also have a Zion Riley, who actually got Firebrand in these issues. Yeah, it's a really excellent storyline. I love, I, I can't wait to review All Star Squad at some point. 194 itself basically has Justice League. Fight Armas Photon and his Terran gang for this one standalone issue. Yeah, still Jericho kind of with George Perez in the artwork. Yep. 195 to I think it's like 197. It's basically another team up with the JSA. And this time they take on the Secret Society of Supervillains. Which this time, the lineup is comprised of members. This is, I believe, the second version of the team. Yes, because the first one was expanded. Uh, this one actually, one if I was the debut of this version of the group. Uh, it's basically, in a way, combination of villains for both Thurfs. 
We have Earth One. We have the Cheetah, the Longman, Killer Frost, uh, and that's and the Single Man with uh, Brainwave. This, of course, is the original one. The second one basically is part of the All Stars Squadron with uh, the Mist, the Monocle, Psycho Pirate, and Ultra Humanite. Yes. In this really good three parter involving another team up. And it's something that they did this prior to 200 because when they did 100, they did a big team up which involved like the death of, of one of the seven soldiers, Shirobi, a character named Wing. I was surprised to do it now. It's kind of weird to do this prior to 200. I'm not sure why. Keep out this cool artwork here. And then for 198, we have the Justice Leaguers, this group. This issue was a prize of Elongate Man, Flash, Hal Jordan, Superman, Zatanna. And they go back in time in the Old West to meet Batlash, Scallop Hunter, Jonah Hex, and uh, Cinnamon. Yeah, I think it's a quick uh, two-parter, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. All still with the Lord of Time. Yeah, I think it's... Yeah, it's wrapped up by 199. Uh, and then, of course... Uh, then they deal with these creatures known as the Axoplanians, which, of course, this was their return. They apparently died of resurrecting the same issue. Yes, this was their first appearance in the book since you 97. Kind of an odd issue for what this is. Mm -hmm. I know it's not 1983. You think it would be this too early, but I figured I'll get it all the way right now. Yeah, let's talk about the very first annual for the series. Yep. Released in 1983, uh, with Paul Levitz. This is not written by Jared Collins, but Paul Levitz and Lean Ween, art by Don Heck. I love the the cover artwork here done by Rick Herbert Dick Giordano. It just is like basically versus Doctor Destiny. Um, the series published in 217 to 18. Uh, the big thing about this story is that the Garrus Sands Sandman, the character created by the late Jack the King Kirby, becomes on a member of Justice League for this issue. Yep, that's kind of in a way a big thing about this annual. But yeah, first big annual for the group, and it's awesome. I give all these issues a 10 out of 10. Really awesome. Next up we have is the first, you know, I'm already second chair for this one already, but now we're talking about Titans Villains for Hire. A, well, I have the issues on here anyways. Uh, a trade that collects the Villains for Hire one-shot, along with issues 24 to 27 of the ongoing series. This, of course, is from the second volume from Titans. Yes, uh, Eric Wallace has taken over the writing to use this book. Yeah, starting with the Villains for Hire special. Which was the uh, last special special release of the series. Well, we have a brand new t a Titans group, a villains group comprised of Deathstroke, Cinder, original villain character group, Osiris, the Tattoo Man, and Cheshire. Yeah, those of you longtime Titan fans know who Cheshire and T Deathstroke is. But you're probably asking, who the heck is Cinder, Osiris, and Tattoo Man? Osiris is Black Adam's brother in law because he's his wife's sister. A brother, excuse me. Uh, Tattoo Man. This, of course, is the... Uh, this is a Jeff Johns version of the character. This is basically Mark Richards. He is the third Tattoo Man. Who's the first if he is of Green Lantern? Yes, who got who last appeared at the end of this volume. But the original Tattoo Man, who is not this one... Let's see... The the original one basically debuted a miniseries called Skin Graft, uh, The Avengers of a Tattooed Man. Uh, looks like he was second one, yeah. The uh, the first one was definitely an Emigre Lantern. Um, yeah, his real name is Abel Tarrant. Debuted in Green Lantern of 1923, died in Checkmate. So, yeah... The tattoo man we have here is the third one. Mm-hmm. 
His whole thing is, is they can bring his tattoo to life. We also got appearance by Dwarf Star and Frank Man. Dwarf Star, which I think, wait, is that the element that basically makes up, uh, well, the, the device make arms shrink? Yes. Apparently, this guy here is the son of a woman named Lady Kronos. Who apparently was love interest of Roy, of Roy Cheadle, the second Adam. Yeah, the whole thing with this with this uh, this villain special is that uh, the villains are hired are hired to kill Roy Cheadle. I don't really know why they're hired by Dwarf Star, and the and of course Flankman is here too because he did technically start out as a villain for uh, the Adam, so of course he appears here now. Uh, he actually taking up duties. This actually was his first full time duty for this book. He would do the book for the remainder of the book's existence prior to it, prior to prior to its ending. First issue he did was issue fourteen. He's back here for this special. Yeah, and he's killed, and then his body is stuffed into a matchbox in a trucking form. Yes, uh, for some reason, I'm not sure who's it. By the way, the arc in this book is done by Fabrio Frito, Mike Mayhew, and Sergio Enido. I'm not sure exactly why Rochu had to die for, but that's basically what we have here. Now, of course, also, the Titans book was tying to, well, Brightest Day. Yep. They had issues with this book part of Brightest Day. Yeah, for issues 24 to 30. Uh, there was a reason for this. Okay, in story, the reason why, because of Osiris, wanted to use the White Land to power, to bring back Black Adam and Isis. That's basically what I want to do here. So in the first issue, uh, the regular issue, they target Lex Luthor. Yeah, and then of course, like, Osiris attacks. Yeah, that's kind of in the way what these issues are. Basically, they're in Metropolis. Yeah, and then this is a weird thing with the cover for issue number uh, 26. Where they say Leanne was born in 2004, died in 2009. Okay, she may have died in 2009, but she was not born in 2004. She was born back in the 80s. I get the fact sliding time scale, but... Yeah. Especially since prior to this, for about a lower decade prior to this, she, she would feature in a original series released in 1999. By Devin Grayson. And here she is here. I get the fact she was young, but she was not born in 04. She was born in the 80s. I'm not sure why. And of course, also this issue is noteworthy for having Roy Harper join the team. Yep, Roy Harper is on the team. And of course, well, Chesh had liked it very much, but yeah, and of course they killed off one of the Dominators. Yeah, Dominators period this issue. So named Elijah, who it's just a team. It's not exactly like yeah. And then the book ends with saying, "Oh yeah, next issue we're going basically uh, next the next thing they're gonna do they're gonna go to Gotham and fight Batman." And I've already discussed that one already, but in the case of the issues, they're actually pretty good. I enjoy these issues. Yep, I'm gonna give these issues. I'm gonna give this trade here roughly a nine out of ten. I do have one more left, and I was I'll basically explain a little history behind this one, and also what happened with it. Yep. Oh, the last trade that was supposed to come out for this book. Um. called Broken Promises. I'll talk about that in our time. Okay? So yes, that's a particularly a particular view. Please be sure to like, comment, subscribe, channel notifications, and do not hit this like button. Um, I'm going to do one more quick video. I'm going to call it a night. Okay? Let's do it.